As climbing continues to evolve as a sport and demand a wider range of physicality, climbers are beginning to realize that they have to train as all-around athletes. Read up a bit on your favorite climbers and you'll realize that many of them, both old school and modern, cross-trained in gymnastics. Handstands are one of those skills that cross over many sports. As a foundational component of gymnastics, it is practiced by dancers, martial artists, and even climbers. I started practicing handstands a few years before I started climbing. The benefits I gained include strengthening of the fingers, development of the shoulders, mainly scapular engagement, a refined sense of balance, and most importantly, improved proprioception, which is the awareness of the position and movement of the body. In this video, I'll go over a conceptual breakdown of the handstand. The aim is to help you understand the key elements so you know exactly what to focus on when you practice the movement. These key elements of a handstand can be neatly summarized into what I call the ART principle. This stands for alignment, rebalancing, and tension. Generally speaking, alignment serves three purposes. One, stability. An aligned structure is harder to topple than a misaligned one. Two, efficient energy expenditure. It takes less energy and stress to hold a straight line. And three, aesthetics. A straight line typically looks prettier than a crooked one. We create alignment in our handstand by vertically lining up these points. Wrists, shoulders, hips, and ankles. It's impossible to bring all these points into alignment simultaneously, so we'll have to establish an order. A few of these points like wrists and shoulders can already be preemptively aligned when we set up for the handstand. As for the rest, we want to use this principle. Start from the center and work outwards. Starting from the center means we will prioritize the hips and shoulders first. When you enter the handstand, focus on bringing up your hips so that they are stacked over your shoulders. Many people tend to focus solely on bringing their legs or feet into end position, and what usually happens is that their hips get left behind. A good way to focus on the hips is to kick up with the legs in a scissored position. This gives you a sense of timing to float the hips up, while also giving you a margin of error for adjusting your balance. Keep your legs scissored until you're able to maintain your balance for at least 10 seconds. Then you can slowly bring your legs together. Remember, start from the center and work outwards. Once your hips are in place, the rest of your lower body will align itself more naturally. There's a common misunderstanding that being aligned is a requirement to being balanced. If you've seen enough handstands, you know this is not true. You can find balance in a variety of different shapes. The key to doing this is your ability to rebalance. We call it rebalancing because with a human body, there is no such thing as absolute balance. Our bodies are alive with many moving internal mechanisms. The reality is we are constantly making adjustments to reestablish our balance. Being in balance means we are constantly rebalancing. Rebalancing is accomplished in two ways. One, micro adjustments. These are made using fingers and palms. Two, macro adjustments. These are made using the shoulders. To give you a better understanding, try this exercise. Stand up straight and slowly lean forward. To keep your balance, you'll first start pressing down with your toes. These are your micro adjustments. When you reach the tipping point, you'll have to push back with the hips to avoid falling over. That's your macro adjustment. The same thing happens if you lean backwards. This time the heels are used for micro adjustments, while pushing the hips forward will be your macro adjustment. Now flip all of that upside down and you'll understand how it works in a handstand. Instead of the toes and heels, we use the fingers and palms for micro adjustments. And instead of the hips, we rely on the shoulders for macro adjustments. 
When you're first learning the handstand, it's more likely you'll rely on macro adjustments to find your balance. This means we need to know how to engage the shoulders. The very first step is getting your scapula in an elevated position. You can think of this as wearing your shoulders as earrings. Next, we'll go over the two common positions that people encounter when they lose their balance and require a macro adjustment. The planche. This is when the hips go behind the line of alignment and the head comes forward of the shoulders. The bridge. Here, the hips go in front of the line of alignment, your back arches, and it feels like you're going to fall into a bridge. When you find yourself losing your balance towards a planche position, you macro adjust by leaning the head and torso ahead of the shoulders. This serves to counteract the dropping of the hips behind the line. When you find yourself losing your balance towards a bridge position, you macro adjust by pushing the torso behind the shoulders, opening the shoulders and chest. This serves to counteract the tipping over sensation of the hips in front of the line. Remember, whatever weight goes over the line of alignment needs to have a counteracting force on the other side of the line. You can get a better sense of this by practicing the planche and bridge in a tuck handstand. The compressed position makes it easier to control than a straight handstand. If you're having trouble in the bridge position, add downward facing dog into your practice to condition your shoulders to open. Imagine I challenge you to a balancing contest. You can choose either a staff or a jump rope to balance upright on the palm of your hand. Which one would you pick? Clearly, the staff is the obvious choice, but why? It's because of tension. The tension in the staff runs through its entire length, allowing it to act as a single structure. The jump rope, although having solid wooden hand grips, has no tension in the rope that is connecting them. This causes it to act as two structures with a flimsy middle. This principle of tension also applies to handstands. You can think of your body as separated into three components, upper body, core, and lower body. Tension applied through the core is what connects the upper to the lower, forming a single unit like the staff. The drill we use to practice tension is called hollow body which means a slight hollowing of the torso, accompanied by a flattening of the back. Here's how we do it. Stand up with your back flat against the wall. Lift up your arms above you and extend them as if you were practicing a handstand. You'll notice that the higher you lift your arms, the more your lower back will naturally arch, creating a small gap between itself and the wall. To get into hollow body, simply close the gap between your lower back and the wall. Be sure to maintain your position with your arms extended. You'll realize that this is a lot harder than it looks. Flattening the back fully against the wall without bending forward takes quite a bit of tension in the core. This is a similar type of tension you need to create in a straight handstand. Now that you have a better conceptual understanding of the handstand, you can use the art principle to identify which parts you need to practice more. If you enjoyed learning from this video and would like to see more handstand material in the future, please let me know in the comments. I hope you continue to be motivated to learn new skills and improve as an athlete. Until next time, move better, climb harder.